Hey guys, this is Taylor with Elliott Armory. Today we're going to talk about a topic that doesn't get much attention these days. We're talking about bow sights on traditional bows. If you go into any forum or Facebook page, uh, anyone that asks about bow sights typically gets shut down about how bow sights are not traditional and don't belong in a traditional bow. Whether that is debatable um, is up to them, but I want to provide some facts about bow sights and how they relate to traditional archery. Here I have a catalog from 1942. Um, at that time, bows would have been all wood, self bows, as well as laminated bows. In this catalog here, we have for sale a bow sight that was adjustable for both windage and elevation. Now, why does that matter? Okay, so this is from the 40s. I found literature as early as even into the 30s about bow sights. Uh, again, who cares? Well, this is why you should care. Here is a modern day recurve. Uh, this is one of my hunting rigs. This is what just about everyone uses. And when you look into it, these are some of the interesting facts. A lot of these guys, of course, this is considered a traditional bow. But if you look closer, fiberglass backing was not brought in until the early 1950s. Actually, 49, but when it was commercially produced, it was into the 50s. Pistol grips and center cut risers didn't come into the mid 50s after fiberglass. Carbon arrows weren't around until the 1980s. And fast flight strings, again, came around somewhere in that late 70s, early 80s, um, along with compounds. So what does that mean? That means that a bow sight is more traditional than almost every single piece of equipment on this bow. It's interesting, right? No one thinks about that. So now we've established that bow sights have been around for a while. Why would you want to use one? This is a mid-60s, 1960s. Uh, this is a Black Hawk B. This is one of my vintage bows I enjoy shooting. And it has an original sight on it. As you can see, just like in that catalog, it's adjustable for windage as well as elevation. You can set it wherever you want. What that means is, is I can shoot this bow, split finger, three under. I can change whatever I want. I can have a low anchor, I can have a high anchor but I can always make the bow shoot where I want it to shoot. Now that's a stark difference from today of through under shooting, uh, gap shooting, string walking, where guys are doing all these things to try to make the bow shoot where they want it to shoot as a bare bow. And they all work, but I believe that the sight has some distinct advantages. So the first advantage, as I said, is you can make it any distance you want. I could shoot this thing if I shot this bare bow without the sight, with a split finger release, with a low jaw anchor, I would have a point on of 70 yards. With this sight, I can shoot that anchor that I find comfortable, and I can have a point on of 15 yards. That is cool because as a hunting situation, I take way more shots at 15 than I do at 70. Actually, I don't take any at 70. So a 70 yard point on does me no good at all but a 15 yard point on is extremely useful. The other thing about it, again, the guys get into string walking and they're pulling down here and this stuff. For a one piece bow especially, it's really wonky on the bow. They sound terrible when they go off and they just generally don't like to be fired that way. And if you're changing where you're drawing from, you're changing the flight of the arrow, especially with a broadhead. So from a hunting situation, having a fixed anchor and being able to adjust where you want to hold would equal a more consistent flying arrow and should do better, especially with broadheads, which can be more finicky. So these are some of the benefits of the sight. You can make it do whatever you want. Some of the downfalls are, is that the sight is pretty finicky. Um, it's a good training aid because it shows you what you're doing, but it also can be quite frustrating because if your form and your alignment aren't the same, you're gonna shoot off. Without the sight, you can blame it on, well, maybe I wasn't aiming quite correctly, but with the sight, there's no question. You were just wrong. And that's, it can be really, really difficult. Um, so I find it frustrating to shoot. If I'm doing things well, 
it's really fun because it's very accurate. Um, so I'm going to show you here. We're going to set up a target and hopefully I can do justice of what this guy can do. Again, this is an old bow, B55 string, and this is not anywhere capable of today's modern bows. But we'll see what it does. So what we have here is my uh, old worn out target. So I shoot broadheads into. Again, deer season is uh, about a month away and we're getting ready for it. Here's a pair we're going to set in just so there's something to aim at. And we'll go back to 15 yards, which is what I have this bow set up at. Again, the reason for that is simply because 15 yards is a very realistic hunting situation for what I do. I've killed almost a dozen deer with a stick bow and I haven't shot one over about 16 yards. Okay, so this is 15 yards. Again, that's what I set my sight on. And looks like all three of them hit the pair. That's a dead squirrel every single shot, along with anything else. So what that shows is again that uh, the sight allows you to be accurate at, a, at one distance whatever you choose that distance to be. But it's also cool with this ring, I can use these as reference points as well. I know from past experience, the middle is dead on at 15 and the bottom of the ring is dead on at 25. So we'll leave this set at 15, we'll go back to 25, I'll aim at the bottom of the ring and we'll see how it does. Okay, so this is 25 yards. We're going to use the bottom of the pin. See what happens. Okay, guys, here's something with a sight. One of the possible uh, downfalls is I laid the bow down and it moved my sight over. So, did not expect that. We will try, that should be, should be about right in there. Let's see if this is better. There we go, it's a lot closer. We'll put one more down there. Perfect. Let's go check that out. All right guys, so this is unfortunate, but I'm really ha glad that it happened because this is a prime example of one of the cons of sight. When you're relying on a sight, if it gets moved, you're gonna shoot off. So what happened is on that last video, when I laid the bow down, this sight doesn't have a stopper for the, or for the windage. And as I laid it down, it actually pressed that sight up. So when I went back to 25, when I took the shot, it shot way off to the right. Um, so I was able to adjust it back and on the third shot, I hit right where I wanted. Again, that shows one of the cons when you're trusting something, it can fail. So, what's my takeaway on sights? Um, do I think everyone should go put sights on their bows? No, I don't. They have their place, they have their pros, and they have their cons. And 
it's just going to be up to you, depending on what you're using your bow for, whether it's target, hunting, aerial, whatever you want. Um, but it's going to be a personal judgment and whether they can help you. In my opinion, would I use sights over string walking? Yes, I absolutely would. I can set it to where I want. I'm not doing funky things with my bow. I can shoot broadheads fine. Um, in my opinion, they would work better than string walking. But there's many people that shoot string walking very well that would disagree. So it ended up, um, yeah, it's fun. It's worth trying. You have nothing to lose. You have a lot to gain. They're a great teacher. They can definitely make you frustrated. And as this shot, they can also make you really happy when you're super accurate. But if you flub it, it's going to suck. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much.